Hey everybody, this is David Collins from Ann Arbor Guitars. If you play guitar and if you've looked through enough uh, instrument specs, at some point or another you've probably encountered some confusing info regarding scale lengths. Why does Martin call their scale a 25.4 inch, uh, but elsewhere you'll see it listed as 25.34? And how did they end up at such a weird number to begin with? I mean, this is America and we really love our simple fractions or whole numbers. And what the heck is up with Gibson? They always say 24 and 3 quarter inches, but when you pull out your ruler, they just don't measure up. Are all these specs just written by men trying to stretch any measurements as far as they think they can get away with? Or is there something else going on? Strangely enough, when you do get down to the little details, scale length can actually get a bit complicated. And that's what we're going to try and clear up for you today. First thing to clear off the table, scale length is not the same thing as string length, or not on fretted instruments anyway. Because of things like string stiffness, changes in tension as you fret, uh, total string length is compensated. It means a bit of extra distance is added beyond the scale length to the saddle. The amount of compensation changes with different strings, setups, playing styles, and this doesn't mean that your scale length changes when you adjust intonation for heavier, lighter strings. Scale length is strictly a measure of the fretboard, or how the frets and nut are spaced out. Um, the most standard measure of scale length is to take the distance from the nut to the 12th fret, multiply that by 2, and that's your scale length. Seems simple, and it is. So why all the confusion with Gibson and Martin scales? I'm going to start with Gibson because the history of their boards is really quite interesting. But first, a bit of background on fret spacing. With few exceptions, the norm for fret boards in the last few centuries has been equal tempered spacing, or at least some close approximation of it. If you're not familiar with equal temperament, it's a bit much to get into here, but basically it means making each semitone equally spaced throughout the octave. Now this isn't really natural, and it means that almost nothing can be perfectly in tune, but it's a pragmatic compromise if you don't want to be limited to just a handful of keys. By the 16th century, uh, people had come up with some reasonably good methods for spacing frets to equal temperament. In 1581, Vincenzo Galilei, Galileo's father, published one of these systems being used, which became known as the Rule of 18. Divide your scale length by 18, and this gives you your nut to first fret measurement. Take what's left over, divide that by 18, and there's your first to second fret. Take what's left, and keep going as many frets as you like. Over the centuries, this system's been refined a bit, and now we've replaced the number 18 with the more correct 17.817, which is derived from the 12th through to 2. Now this system has been used on guitars uh, for at least, at least since the late 1800s. But not at Gibson guitars. Gibson's fret spacing system in the first half of the 20th century uh, is so bizarre that thus far it has completely evaded any kind of explanation that I know of. When you compare it against equal tempered spacing as seen here, or even against historical uh, ratio spacings of lutes and viols um, and early known fret spacing, it really doesn't come close to matching up to anything that I am familiar with. Honestly, it looks more like they had someone from the finishing department lay out the fret spacing tools after a long day in the spray room. By the time Gibson began electrifying their guitars, the intonation problems were just too much to bear. With pickups being more sensitive to overtones, players exploring new styles, they had to fix their fret spacing. So, Gibson hired some folks at University of Chicago to help them with this in the late 1940s. Now remember, at this point, equal-tempered board spacing was pretty well established. Other factories like Lion and Healy, Regal, Epiphone, plenty of others had been using the 12 through to 2 spacing for some time. But what Gibson apparently got back from their friends at the university happened to be the 16th century rule of 18, literal 18 divisor. And this is where the difference between what Gibson calls uh, their scale length and what it measures at by others can begin to make sense. With 12 through to 2 spacing using a 17.817 divisor, when you get to the 12th fret, you will be exactly halfway up your scale. Start with a 24 and 3 quarter, and your 12th will fall at 12 and 3 eighths. When you use the old 18 divisor, however, your 12th fret now falls a bit short, landing instead at 12.285 inches uh, from the nut instead of 12.375. If we take that measurement and double it, we end up with a scale length of 24.57 inches. This discrepancy falls between what I call the base scale length, the original number from which fret spacing was calculated, and the relative scale length, or the final result that dictates how you're actually going to set the guitar up, how long the string lengths are actually going to be in the end. 
So Gibson does actually space their boards to a 24 and 3 quarter inch base scale length. But since they've continued to use this rule of 18 up through to this very day, their real scale length, or relative scale, ends up nearly 3 16 of an inch shorter. Evaluating historical scale lengths can get even trickier because there was a lot of tooling error that changed over the years. Uh, they kept using the same base scale for intended layout, but if saw blades got worn or were changed, this introduced a lot of variation. Uh, you can actually find scales measuring from just over 24 and a half inches up to near a full 24 and 3 quarter. Most fall around 24 and 9 16 to 24 and 5 8 though. And I should note that this rule of 18 thing only applies to Gibson's Nashville production today. A Gibson Epiphone, for example, 24 and 3 quarter, is actually a true 24 and 3 quarter inch scale. Gibson's Bozeman factory builds their acoustics with modern fret spacing 12 through to 2, uh, but they actually set their scale length to 24 and 5 eighths, which keeps their final layout quite similar to historical specs. Um, I happen to know this wasn't any kind of intentional change when they moved to Bozeman. It's just that when they were setting up, no one there thought to ask, hey, do you want us to use that old 16th century formula for spacing frets or the new one? Kind of one of those assumptions that just wouldn't occur to anyone to really be in question. So what about Martin? Where did they ever come up with numbers like 25.34 or 24.84 on their short scales? And why do they call them things like 25.4 and 24.9? Well, what they call them amounts to a rough layman's approximation. Uh, keep it to no more than one decimal point and round up a bit to favor compensation. In technical terms, this really shouldn't be considered a scale length at all, and I can give at least one very good example of why not. Years back, I had a guitar from a small builder on my bench, built with a 25.4 scale length. The builder had sourced their 25.4 board, along with a 25.4 template for bridge layout from the same supplier. Unfortunately, the board and the template were made by two different manufacturers who used two different definitions. The board was a true 25.4 scale, while the template was a Martin 25.4, therefore actually 25.34. Just an example of how much clear definitions can really matter. In this case, it ended up mattering about 350 bucks by the time we had to replace the bridge with a relocated saddle slot. So Martin isn't really a 25.4 at all, but a 25.34 for their long scale and 24.84 for their short. So why such odd numbers? Why not 25 and a half or 25 even? As it would turn out, it seems this is exactly where they did start out. You see, up until the late 1970s, Martin was using this old rule of 18 as well. When older boards are measured out, what we find is they were using a base scale of 25 and a half for their long scale and 25 even for their short. Shortened by use of the rule of 18, you end up in the range of 25.32 and 24.82. When they retooled in the late 70s, uh, they switched over to the modern 12 through to 2 spacing, and in order to keep the overall dimensions and string lengths about the same, they ended up going with scales we see today, 25.34 and 24.84. Another mystery solved. Other manufacturers aren't nearly as interesting. Fender, Taylor, PRS, Guild, they all started and stuck with the obvious standard 12 through to 2 spacing. The only factories I know of today still using the rule of 18 would be Gibson in Nashville and Heritage Guitars, who is of course using an old gang saw Gibson left behind. Now on to the big question. You may be wondering, what does the rule of 18 have to do with your intonation? Well, the answer is, it depends. The effects are not really that great through most of the board, uh, though it does have some notable impact as you reach the upper frets. More importantly, it can influence how one may approach setting intonation, but we're going to get into that in a later video. I hope that you found at least something interesting in this video. If you like to keep up on more videos as they come out, you can subscribe to us here on YouTube, uh, follow us at Ann Arbor Guitars on Facebook, or visit our webpage www.annarborguitars.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.